Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this beautiful, it is a Saturday morning, the last spring weekend before the summer of 2021 hits. So that makes it Saturday, June 19th, 2021 and the little dog and I, we need to head to the Amish furniture maker to get a couple of picnic tables for the hip camp here at Bugs in a Jar. We're actually getting some business little by little, but there's plenty of room to come see us at Bugs in a Jar hip camp. Uh, before I go, I, I was going to read this long essay. We have not checked in with Chris Hedges for a while. I'd wonder what happened to Chris. I found him again last night. I was gonna read this long essay, you know, his usual broken record rant about the collapse of the American empire and the famous what's going to happen when the dollar is no longer the reserve currency, which I believe he was talking about that in 2008, uh, I believe Chris was talking about the imminent collapse of the U.S. dollar and being the, anyway, but I decided since tomorrow is Sunday, I'm going to make that long essay my Sunday sermon. And today we're just going to do a short, sweet one because this is a little microcosm of what collapse could look like. This is kind of, maybe this is kind of in the camp of the John Michael Greer version. We're going to go over to Pakistan for today's chronicle of the collapse. Um, you know, I always hold up Lagos, Nigeria as the poster child of what the planet is, is going to look like. But Pakistan is, you know, it's right up there with Lagos, Nigeria. The difference, of course, is that Pakistan has nuclear weapons and Nigeria does not, as far as I know. So what is going on in Pakistan this week? <clears throat> this is from the Telegraph <coughs> in England. Violence shatters Pakistani elite as thousands protest illegal land grab. Yes, this is how uh, the elites are going to, what they're going to be looking at as this whole house of cards comes down. For those fortunate enough to own a home in a Baria town development, the elite suburb promises to offer a respite from the clamor of life in much of Pakistan, prospective residents from Karachi, you know, Karachi, Pakistan is kind of like the Asian version of Lagos, Nigeria. And there's a similar one of these places in Lagos too. A, this development I'm talking about in Karachi, there's a very similar one of these. Uh, being built in Lagos, Nigeria, and probably every one of these hell holes. You take any hell hole and you're going to find one of these gated communities out in these suburbs. But this is just happens to be Karachi. Prospective residents from Karachi are, are lured with assurances that they can swap the blackouts, floods, and rubbish heaps of the port metropolis for a luxury lifestyle in a manicured architectural fantasia. Brochures offer world-class amenities, a flood-lit golf course, and even a replica Parthenon. Yes. Yet, Two weeks ago, the haven of Baria town appeared to be more of a war zone than a haven of peace and serenity. The imposing front gate, which has been likened to a spaceship, was ablaze 
while shops and offices in the development were being smashed up and vandalized by rioters. Terrified residents were left to take refuge in their homes and complain about the lack of police. While Pakistan is often gripped by political and religious protests, the rich are rarely targeted and the violent intrusion in Baria town has shaken elite Pakistani society beyond its gates. The riot on June 6 followed a protest by as many as 10,000 people against a project which has been mired in controversy since it began. The Baria town development is on the eastern outskirts of Karachi in Sindh province, calls itself Asia's largest private property developer, but it has been accused of illegally grabbing land, forced evictions, and the bulldozing of villages. The project has been the subject of protests by groups rec representing local, sin local Cindy's for years, but the June 6 protest was by far the biggest held against the development. This is Qadir Magzi, uh, head of one of the head of one of the protests. Um, he said the development was clearing old graves and ancient villages. Quote. First, the bulldozer is driven, and then the landowner is threatened by the police, and the land deeds are taken away. We do not accept the existence of Baria Town in our land. The poor people of Sindh cannot afford such expensive plots and houses. Close quote. In May, protesters opposing the clearing of villages to expand the development said they had been fired on by security guards. Police have cracked down hard after the unrest with at least 162 arrests on arson and rioting charges. Uh, Sin's chief minister Syed Murad Ali Shah said, everyone has the right to protest, but violence will not be tolerated. If anyone does so, action will be taken. Yes. The man behind the Berea town development is Malik Riaz Hussein, one of the country's richest men and its most successful property tycoon, as well as the Karachi's development. His company has similar ventures in other major cities across the country. His wealth <clears throat> is such that he is accused of being able to buy whatever local politicians he needs, and allegedly paying off journalists for favorable coverage of his empire, which he denies. He says Baria Town has not undertaken any illegal activities. And then uh, they break down all of these various convictions and char charges against him and all these crimes he's been convicted of, uh, which you can you, you can uh, figure for yourself what that sounds like. <clears throat> Moving ahead, Berea Town's residents and businessmen have demanded tough action against the rioters. The culprits, quote, should be severely punished so the confidence of the business community is restored and the federal and provincial governments can repair all the damage. Close quote said one. <clears throat> now, the, the, it closes with this, and you hear this one all the time. 
you, you, we heard this on January 6th in our own country's riot, and here is this uh, claim to wrap up the story. But the parties behind the protest have vowed to continue their campaign and claimed that they had no role in the riots and suggested the violence had been orchestrated, you know, by the uh, developers to discredit them. Uh, Syed Jalal Meshmoud Shah, owner, uh, convener of the Sin Action Committee, said, quote, miscreants were allowed to set ablaze property despite the presence of thousands of police. They had no relation with us. So, we ask, why did police and security allow them to set fires to cars and shops? If someone would grab the land of Sind, we will stop them. Close quote. So, uh, I'm going to take that last paragraph with a grain of salt, but who knows? Uh, there's probably a grain of truth in that. I am certainly not denying that that has never happened, but uh, I don't buy it. But anyway, keep your eye on Karachi, Pakistan, Lagos, Nigeria, you know, just the usual band of suspects. Uh, how about Chicago, Illinois, Baltimore, Maryland? Uh, but we are in Ithaca, New York, where it is just all peace and tranquility. I'm sure the farmer's market is cranking up and it's just getting back to normal up here in the great state of New York. Getting back to normal. Uh, <clears throat> that's another rant for another day, but right now I get to go enjoy the gorgeous late spring scenery of upstate New York and go support the Amish in their planet nibbling. And I suggest you get out there and support the Amish <laughs> while you still can. I will be back tomorrow with the sermon by uh, Chris Hedges. Uh, I'm thinking that Brother Ben has a uh, has a mystery guest for uh, our interview of the week. I don't know. It, it is now Saturday morning, and uh, Ben has not sent me the interview yet, so I have not listened to it myself. So may or may not be an interview tomorrow. I don't know. Anyway, I gotta go. Bye, guys. Little dog, you do not look that excited about going on a trip. <laughs>